We've talked about those things. I think there's a real crossover, isn't there, between uh, the question I asked you before about uh, what the things we can do as teachers to maintain our mental health and, and what I've just asked, how can we avoid burnouts? But in terms of actually, if you think, okay, I'm hitting a wall here, I'm about to hit a wall. Well, one thing I think we can do is seeing the symptom, what comes up in you, um, and that's from experience, I think. But what are some of the other things that we can do when we think we're about to hit that wall? To Well, if all your steps to manage how you're feeling, then you might need to talk to somebody within your employment, someone that you know you can approach. If there is a designated person, that's fine. If there's someone that you can trust, that's even better. Um, I mean, I'm not an expert on dealing with burnout in teachers. And the reason I say that is because I now take steps. I decide not to take on too much now because I know what is manageable for me. So if I'm employed full time on a summer course, I go, well, that's my job. I'm not going to take on too much. So I'm not going to teach students on the side. I'm not going to mark essays on Saturdays. I'm not going to um, do extra training videos on a Sunday when I've got a full time job. Okay, so that's me making decisions for myself, but not everyone makes those decisions because they feel that they've got to do this and they've got to do that. And some people have families and some people have children that they've got to look after and take care of as well. And I know somebody else is interviewing Rachel Roberts for mm -hmm. this particular podcast. Yes. And she's a better person, I feel, to, she has written a lot about burnout. And she knows much more about, uh, because she's into neuroscience and the way the brain works. Mm -hmm. um, my personal issues have been about panic, panic attacks, panic disorder, anxiety. Uh, I've had depression as well, but in more recent years, it's been anxiety and panic, um, as opposed to, and it's because it, that's about perceptions and how I how I perceive mm -hmm. a non-existent threat, basically. Mm -hmm. So I can't speak with with authority on burnout, but someone like Rachel Roberts okay. can, okay. and that's one of her specialisms, I would say. And I, and I think you've made a very useful point that everyone's experience is very personal. Um, and it's, it's also hard for even the specialist to generalize, let's face it. However, I, I can say from personal experience, my moments have been from panic, but also burnout. And there's been a combination of those two things. Um, there's been a background of stressful environmental factors, world factors, in, in fact, as well. Um, uh, a certain element of burnout and panic arising from that. And through lack of sleep, actually, as an underlying cause. And the last time it happened to me was I Apple Brighton, where I put myself on the spot, spoke in front of 200 people, which I hadn't done in a long time, not used to doing, stressed myself out about being perfect with that, with, with that uh, workshop, and experienced a panic attack. Actually, the talk went absolutely fine, not as well as I would have liked as a perfectionist, but it went fine. But ultimately, my coping strategy was to leave and go and sit on the beach. And it was a very useful strategy um, at the time. Uh, so I think if all else fails, for me, my personal experience is have a break. And indeed, in Brighton at the same conference, I went for a, a walk on the beach mm. um, with a storytelling friend. And we had an ice cream. And we took time out from the conference mm. because conferences themselves can be yes. overwhelming for a lot of people. Completely. Um, and I know... Uh, people like Laura Patsko have written about uh, conferences for introverts because not everyone is an extrovert and can go around and socialize and present and yeah. go to all the events at something like an IOTEFL conference. And I often <laughs> privately think, um, and this is the first time I've publicly said this, which was my favorite IOTEFL conference? Um, and I've had some terrible ones <laughs> where I was full of anxiety and I couldn't leave my hotel room like Liverpool 2013, 2013. But I've also had some fantastic ones. I think Brighton was my favorite one because I rode the, the crest of the wave. I know Brighton is by the seafront, but I actually rode the crest of the wave um, figuratively and literally, I suppose. Um, it was my first time I presented at a conference. It was very well received and I just had a fantastic experience. Great. But there's a little, little tiny thought in the back of the chimp-like brain that goes, ah, this isn't going to last you're going to fall on your face anytime soon mm -hmm. so you was always a little voice going the monkey mind the monkey mind telling you, you this won't last you're going to fall down flat on your face before long this is not this is too good for you it's too good to be true and i got through that week at brighton and it was a fantastic week that was my favorite conference brighton 2018